Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. I am here today to talk about aircraft de-icing because my brother, he flies a lot, and he asked me, why isn't there just a system where aircraft can just drive through a de-icing system and get de-iced? It takes forever, and why do you even have to do it? Well, I got to explaining it to him and then thought this might be helpful for people getting ready for a dispatcher test or other practical tests or anything like that. So we're going to talk about aircraft de-icing today. And to start off with, we want to talk about why. Because ice, snow, or frost basically messes with our wing's ability to create lift. And when I said my brother said, why do they even have to do it? He wasn't, he wasn't really saying like, why not just go without, just go with stuff on the wing. You know, he's just asking me, why does it take so long? What's with the coordination? And that kind of those questions. So I don't want to throw him under the bus. Uh, but when we have a contaminated wing, meaning something is on the wing that shouldn't be on the wing or other critical surfaces of the aircraft, we end up increasing our stall speed and reducing controllability of the aircraft and altering the aircraft's flight characteristics, which is bad. We don't want to be a test pilot with passengers on board an aircraft. I don't want to be a test pilot anyway. I didn't train for that. And so this clean aircraft concept is really important. And icing accidents have occurred with even large aircraft that lost controllability because of too much contamination on the wing. Second reason is we have regulatory requirements. So I'm not going to read all this, but you can look it up. It's 14 CFR in part 91. It says, Pilots are not supposed to take off with contamination. And in 121, we go even a step further saying no person may dispatch or release an aircraft or continue to operate if in the, in the opinion of the PIC or the dispatcher, ICE's conditions that could happen that is affecting safety of flight. Also, it says you cannot take off with any contamination on what we call critical surfaces. So, two reasons, regulatory, and a bunch of reasons from aerodynamic perspective. So let's talk about how we actually get an aircraft de-iced. First, we have two words that are thrown around, de-icing and anti-icing. De-icing is just like it sounds, it's removing ice from the aircraft. So you go out to your car, your car is covered in frost, you put on whatever you have for the like rear windshield heat to melt it off. Same with the airplane. We're de-icing the airplane, except for we're not necessarily using hot things to do it. Um, with the de-icing, we have the one-step method, which means we are applying a heated fluid to melt off whatever is on the aircraft. We, gen we call this a type one fluid. This works fine if there's no precipitation forming and no frost forming on the aircraft at present. Now let's talk about the different types of fluids. De-icing and anti-icing fluids, how do they actually work? Well, they lower the freezing point of water. That would make sense because we want that water to freeze at a lower temp so we can remove it from the aircraft. And there are different types based primarily by ethylene glycol from a chemistry standpoint. I'm not going to do a chemistry lesson, but you should wear protective equipment when you're spraying them. They should not be sprayed into engines. Typically, they should not be sprayed into inlets that can get in the cabin. We don't want to be breathing it. We don't want to have the cabin air blowing into the passengers when we're spraying this because that's not good for passengers to breathe. With the de-icing fluid, this type 1 fluid that I mentioned, it is typically a minimum of 80% of that ethylene glycol, and it's usually orange. And like I mentioned, we have heat with that fluid. The idea is to melt the precipitation or whatever's on the aircraft off. Okay. Now you might say, well, okay, why don't the aircraft just have heated surfaces like my car? Just melt it off. Well, guess what? Big transport category airplanes 737, since I teach that class, dispatch class, based on 737, you know what? We do have a heated surfaces. We have all kinds of heated surfaces. However, you can't just turn these heated surfaces on all the time on the ground because they're actually so hot from the engine bleed air that we can melt 
metal with it. So that's not good. We want the airplane moving through the air with a cooling effect so we're not like overheating surfaces with engine bleed air, heat, and stuff like that. And if you want to hear about bleed air and all that, I have other video about that. So these fluids are a safe way to remove contamination. Uh, and so we're not running the risk of melting aircraft components because there are plenty of parts of aircraft that are heated, but that's primarily to prevent ice from forming while we're flying. So de-icing removes ice, like it sounds like. Now, what is anti-icing? What is that about? That, just like it sounds again, after we have a clean aircraft, but if precipitation is falling, we need some kind of protection for the aircraft to remain contaminant free while we are taxiing around on the ground. Now, once we get in the air, like I mentioned, we can use the aircraft's anti-ice systems. It's awesome uh, and, and very effective, but we can't have it forming while you're in the line of 20 aircraft deep trying to get out of Chicago. So we need something to prevent ice or snow or whatever precipitation from sticking to the aircraft on the ground. And for that, we use anti-icing. And so we frequently refer to the two-step method. First, we're going to clean the aircraft up with the de-icing fluid that's applied hot. Then we're going to apply an ice protectant. That's an anti-ice, and it's usually called type 2 or type 4 fluid, and it's applied that without any heat. We have type 2 fluid. These are thickened fluids. So is type 4. They remain on the aircraft longer. And again, they're just different types. You don't really need to be familiar with like, what is really the difference? They are different color. Type two ranges from an amber to a straw color. It is set up the viscosity so that it will shear off the airplane's wing on takeoff so that it comes off when the airplane gets to appropriate speed where now my anti-ice protection airplane controlled heat surfaces are effective. Type 4 fluid, we see that actually a lot. It's the green color. If you've seen this, I have a picture coming up. Again, very similar. It's also thickened, just like the type 2 fluid. It shears off at about 85 knots, roughly. Again, the fluids have different, different uh, characteristics. So here's a picture of some de-icing occurring, and you can see the green fluid being icing, uh, put on there. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. It's not de-icing. They're anti-icing. They're applying anti-ice protection to the aircraft. So anyway, since my brother asked me about this and why is there so much delays at certain airports and whatever, I started looking into the future maybe of de-icing. I found that actually at Chicago O'Hare and some other airports, they have been impl implementing a whole de-icing system of better organization. One of the really cool things I read about, and I'll put some links in the video description if you want to read more, is that they even have installed a Ice Link actual iPad app for pilots, specifically at O'Hare, where the aircraft is guided in by special lights. When the de-icing begins, it's all coordinated through the app. The pilots have access to the app. They actually know the progress the de-icing the, the truck is doing as it goes around and sprays. We could have more than one truck, like this picture has just one truck. Actually, no, they got two going on there. I didn't see the one on the wing. Um, but this system actually tells the pilot the progress, and it also communicates with the de-icer so they know when the pilot is ready to begin the de-icing. Because the brake needs to be set, the cabin air needs to be turned off. Remember, I said we don't want it getting in the cabin. So we have some series of communication needed, but it's now been automated through app at certain airports. And then to answer, you know, my brother's question about like, why don't they just drive through? Well, guess what? I found a system. Again, I'm going to put some links in the description. You can read about this. It's being tested. I believe it was in Norway where they're testing a drive through de-icing system and try to save time. So I think that could be coming in the future. Um, as quite recently, they've been testing these systems. Here's another kind of a computer generated image of what might be coming in the future. This picture is a little weird though. It looks to me like the airplane wing does not fit in there. Uh, this is actually a test bed that I located in, uh, Norway where they're doing this. So let's briefly talk procedure. Like I said, there's some communication required and there's some 
level of trust and training required for sure. The de-icing people need special training. The pilots need to trust the de-ice people to do their job properly, but it is on the pilot to ensure that we don't have frost, ice, snow, adhering to the wings, control surfaces, or other parts of the aircraft, what we call the critical surfaces. There's a big list I put up of some critical surfaces. This means that after the process is done, we need some sort of inspection, and sometimes it means touching, tactile, sometimes it's visual. And when the de-icing process begins, the other thing you may hear about in the training for this is something about hold over times. That means how long is the fluid effective? Because we spray the anti-icing fluid on, it's a protection, right? But if precipitation is occurring, then it's hitting the anti-icing fluid. Every drop of rain, freezing rain, snow, whatever that's hitting, it is making that fluid a little bit less effective because it's diluting it by the precipitation that's falling. Depending on the type of fluid, what strength was used, and what type of precipitation's falling, we have a variable time at which that fluid will remain effective and protect our aircraft while we're in, in the big 20 airplane or whatever line to depart. This is called holdover time. Again, it's just an estimate of time that this fluid is supposed to prevent ice or frost or precipitation, whatever, accumulating on the airplane. When the de-icer starts their de-ice process or the anti-ice stuff being sprayed on, they are going to record the time when we started. And when that time expires, the fluid is no longer effective. There are some means by which a crew could still depart after holdover time, but it's beyond the scope of this video. You would learn about that in your aircraft anti-ice de-icing training at whatever airline you end up working for, because it's going to be company-specific procedures. But here's an example of a holdover timetable. The FAA publishes these every year. This is a super old one. This is not usable for flying. Please do not try to even use this chart. But for this fluid, depending on, you can see what type of precipitation is falling, depending on the temperature, depending on the fluid mix with water, how diluted it is, the timetable varies. So it really depends, but it's important that the crew knows when the de-ice application or the anti-ice application begins, because then they know how long that product should protect their aircraft on taxi. I really like this IceLink app that I found because there's the holdover time start. It's actually communicated to the crew via this app. So now the pilot knows when the holdover time started and it's automatic. But if we don't have this cool app at O'Hare, then the ground crew has to communicate with the flight crew, typically by radio, and they're going to tell them at least the following. We have a what type of fluid was used, the water mix ratio, what time we actually started the application, and what time it is when it's done, and the fact that they did the de-icing or anti-icing, visual or tactile or whatever inspection had to be done. So I hope you learned something about anti-icing and de-icing. Be sure to check out the links I'm going to post about the articles and like and subscribe. Look for more. I love explaining cool topics, so I love it when people tell me things I should explain for them so that you learn more about aviation and have a great day.